My name's Juliet um, and I live in Oxford. I came here to get married in 1970. We've had three children in Oxford. One of them lives back in Oxford, the other two are further away. And because of my younger daughter's interest, I do some gymnastic coaching. Very lucky to be here, very lucky to live in Oxford, where we couldn't afford to live now if we were to come now. And I have many friends around here. This is a lovely road to live in. It changed quite a lot, but our children enjoyed growing up here. I bought them in the sale, because I always buy my shoes in the sale, if I can, in the local shoe shop in Summertown, where we live. Um, because I like to go to local shops. I like comfortable shoes. I like flat, flat heel shoes. I don't, I'm not good with, with uh, smart high heels. They were for a long while my best shoes. And as they began to break apart at the bottom, they became my gardening shoes. But they're now even too leaky to be my gardening shoes almost. But um, so they've been very good companions to my life for a long time. I've walked around Oxford in them many, many, many miles. <laughs> well, they must have been to Germany, not walking there, but I, they have been uh, many times, I think, to Germany to stay in Bonn. Uh, the city of Oxford was twinned with the city of Bonn in 1945 or six. So we became involved with the twinning link of the churches between Oxford and Bonn, and so we travelled to Bonn every other year to our wonderful hosts in Bonn and then the other years they come and stay with us and we have such a tremendous uh, relationship. We study, um, we study the Bible, we talk, we talk about our different, the different ways in which we see our faith. Uh, we've taken our German friends to Coventry Cathedral to talk about peace and we have been to, um, in Germany, we've been to some of the mosques and talked about relations with Islam. Um, we've had many wonderful experiences. When you put your shoes on in the morning and you think, what have I to do today? Some of them are difficult things, as you say. Uh, some of them are wonderful things. So you may be going to see a friend. Um, you may be uh, going to a difficult meeting. I think if it's a very difficult thing, one of the sayings I found useful is, I've got a very difficult thing to do, to do today, but by tomorrow it will be done. Lots of things to enjoy, concerts, plays. Yes, I'm sure these shoes have been to many concerts and many plays in Oxford or Stratford or London. It's very busy. It's full of, full of tourists. Lots of people want to come to Oxford to see how beautiful it is and how interesting and the history. Um, which can make it difficult sometimes for the residents, um, but it's lovely to, that, that so many people want to come and see Oxford. Alongside the tourists, there are many, many, many homeless people. Oxford is full of people who have nowhere to go, and it's very difficult to uh, look after them all. Um, so that's another thing that you really do notice in Oxford. Traffic. The traffic's terrible. There's nowhere, there's nowhere to put roads in Oxford. There are many rivers, many canals, many beautiful open spaces, but nowhere to put any more roads. So, And you see friends. You walk down the street and you bump into people you know, which is nice. It's a friendly, it's a friendly city. One of the things that I became involved with, quite by chance, was a very small, originally Christian, but, n but not overtly Christian uh, group to support people with depressive illnesses and mental health problems. This group just tries to meet once a month in someone's home and people can come if they feel well enough and they feel like it, they can come and they can listen and talk and share and it's much easier to share these problems with other people with similar who, who, who will recognise what you're talking about. Now I don't have, I haven't had uh, depressive problems but I found it. I found it's one of the groups I like to go to best because it's so open. It's and the, and all the people who suffer in that way are such sensitive, interesting, funny, you know, wonderful people. Um, they seem to have a particular skill in in that sense, that whole sensitivity to life, which is probably why they suffer. So I have tried. Not to put myself so much maybe in their shoes because I don't think it's possible, but to understand how to be alongside, how to be there, how to try to say things that maybe 
not necessarily helpful, but sympathetic or empathetic. Wow. Well, love, obviously. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't be yourself. Like it says, uh, you know, you love other people as you love yourself, and you can't love other people if you don't love yourself. So you need to feel love from someone, it, from from God, and you need to feel part of community. I think, I suppose, respect comes with love, doesn't it? Um, one of the things that came home to me recently is access to water. The head of was it the head of um, Nestle said water was not a human right recently. And you think, no, he's wrong. You've got to have access to food and water. But but basically water, I mean water's you can't it's a sine qua known, you can't do without water. Um, so that that really impressed me that we take it for granted. But, and for I think I think the basic human right should be for everyone to have enough. Then for the not you know, to, to take away that inequality between the people who have nothing and the people who've ten yachts and don't know what to do with them. It's interesting, some, when, when we were still not long after being students, some friends of ours, we had a meal together and they said, and, and they weren't that well off either, you know, and they said, we're rich, and, and I remember my husband said, I'm glad you said that, because we, we, we do need to remember that we may struggle at the end of each month, but we are rich, look at what we've got. But though I'm not entirely easy going, I'm quite critical, I'm quite... Picky. I quite. I I hate injustice. I hate unfairness. I hate lies. Um, but I think I'm quite easy going. My children call me. You know, we talk about family roles. I'm the placator. I always find something good to say, or you know. So that's that's how they see me, I suppose. I like all kinds of people. I don't want people to be all the same. I, want, I like all kinds of people. I like to care. I think you need to care about things and about people. It is a gift, isn't it, that that we can say, where in the world would you like to go? It was something that we, we asked us, each other at, at, uh, as a family gathering recently. Where in the world, if you had all the money and time, would you like to go? And you can, you can answer that question. You can, but that relies on peace and safety and and the willingness of other people to welcome you but there are people who can't move people who have to move that they don't want to I think I mean both my husband and one of his oldest and best friends they both worked around the world in other places to, for work and and they said the first thing you have to do is to understand the culture that you're visiting to understand how you greet people even and our son and his girlfriend have been travelling to, to many different countries in the last six months. Um, and in most of the countries they've tried to visit projects or tried to help. They've been and helped with a farming project uh, for a day, only for a day, to see how those projects work, to see how people live in the real world in that country. Or to go and teach, talk English in a school in Vietnam for a day. Or whatever they were doing. They, they've tried to be... To, to really find out the culture and the history of those countries. They're not just, where can we find a nice meal and, and, and something cheap to drink. It's, it's what is this country like? What, how do people live here? What's it like for them? But I've really admired them for that. that they, I'd like to go as far as I can with my grandchildren. Because I'd love to see how they cope with life. Well, obviously with my children too, but with those those families, I'd love to go as far as I can with them. To be able to still sit in the shade on a sunny day, to sit out and enjoy a garden, to... It doesn't have to be something big. As you get older, you know, you're not, not looking at necessarily at big things. 